Look, we've got a question on a complex fraction. Let's say you got uh, 5H plus 2X equals 2 thirds minus 5H. Now, we know that we can multiply numerator denominator by a fraction of a fraction by the same number. In other words, I could multiply this fraction. Well, I'm going to choose uh, the appropriate number here. I'm going to multiply by 24 over 24. Okay. And this gives me 24 times 5 eighths plus 2 x over 24 times 2 thirds minus 5 x. Can you then continue that and see what you get? Okay, so what's 24? Well, Let's first of all write out the distributed loss rate. We got 24 times 5x. So we write that as 24 over 1 times 5x since so we got fractions. And then plus 24 times 2x divided by 24 over 1 times 2 thirds. Minus 24 times 5x. Okay, well, think about 24 over 1 times 5x. It's equal to 24 over 8 times 5 over 1, isn't it? That is I multiply the numerators, I still have 24 times 5 in the way. And if I multiply the denominators, I still have 8 times 1. Okay. Well, what's 24 divided by 8? Okay. So that's 3. So that's going to just be 3. And then you can apply the same idea to the denominator. Okay, so we understand we can bring the eight, well, yeah, switch the eight and the one here. It would make a difference. And uh, we get three. That's 24 times two is 48. So we have two plus 48x. And down here, we can do a similar thing. Uh, three will go into 24, eight times. Eight times two is 16. And then if we want to see if this reduces, we do the step, we factor everything we can out of the numerator and out of the denominator. So if we completely factor the numerator and completely factor the denominator, We're going to get eight times two minus fifteen x in the denominator. Eight being the biggest number that we can factor out, and we see that none of these factors match. None of these factors have anything in common. Okay, now. Again, after you get here, you want to completely factor your numerator and denominator. Make sure nothing factors out. None, none, none of the factors match. Okay. Open math doesn't seem to understand that. It wants this. Okay. I don't know if it'll even accept this. Um, and I, I disagree with them on that. I, there are obvious reasons these things need to be factored. 
So it'll be consistent in everything they're telling you about rational expressions. Um, well, it's not being very consistent there. Okay. So you got kind of got to be alerted to that. Now, if you were to uh, give this answer and open math counted it as wrong, I would notice and say, oh my gosh, you missed something. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> okay. And I'd look at it and see what you missed. And I'd look at that and I'd say, oh, great. That looks like a better answer than the one open math is expecting. And I'll restore your credit, okay? Um, okay, well, very good. So, uh, and you just did the one you asked about. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got it. Uh, but let's take a little more of a look ahead on some of the problems that you're going to encounter and make sure that you got everything you need to solve them. Okay, so we have this. We identify our common denominator as 4x and because x is a factor of 4x and 4x, of course, is a factor of itself, okay? So we multiply this by 4x over 4x. And I'm going to write it out in a step like that, step by step. Okay, so just writing it out, uh, we then apply the distributive law. And write the 4x over 1 by 3 over x, just to make sure we understand it's a fraction. That can actually be skipped if you know that 4x times 3 over x means 4x over 1. Times three over x. But still, this stage probably a good idea to write it out that way. So we've got numerators that we can match with numerators and denominators that we can match with denominators. In any case, 4x times 5 over 4x, 4x over 1 times 5 over 4x, minus 4x times 2. Okay, so just We're going to write this 4x over 1 times 3 over x as a product of three fractions. And just to make sure we really understand what happens to that x. It looks pretty obvious x is going to divide into x to give us 1. Um, don't really have a good place that this going. Like this, 4x over one, three over x can be written this way. Fraction that can write four over one times x over x times three over one. And what I'm really after is getting that x over x so that I know that that x cancels, okay? You know, just cross things out. You at least in your mind deconstruct it like this to make sure everything works. Um, of course, another way of looking at it is x factors out of the numerator and x factors out of the denominator. Okay. In any case, that ends up being. Four times one times three, which is 12. Okay, so we get 12 plus 24x divided by, okay, same thing here. It's obvious that you could switch the one and the 4x. You have 4x over 4x, that's one. So you get five 
minus theta. And then we can factor 12 out of the numerator. And there we have it in factor form. Again, over math might well work this. But they might accept this. Okay. But they might want this and accept this. And what I see so far go with this. But do this. Okay, now we're doing quite well here. We see that we multiply this by 30x squared over 30x squared because 30x squared contains x squared as a factor. It contains 3x as a factor, it contains 5, and it contains 6. So we get 3x squared over 1 times 4 over x squared. Now I'm skipping a step here. Step I'm skipping is 30x squared times this whole quantity. I'm going to assume we understand this. But always a good idea to write it out at least every once in a while to remind yourself if that's what's happening. Because if you do it visually, it's real easy to just multiply the 30x squared by this thing and not that thing. Okay. Uh, so But it should be clear. I think it's clear to everybody right now that that's the way it's going to work out. And then we get the same thing with the denominator. And what's that going to eat? Again, it's clear that we could, I'm going to say we could factor out x squared from the numerator here. And from the denominator, and we end up with an x squared over x, and the x squared would go away. Okay, still don't like to cross them out, so I'm not going to. But this is going to then end up with just 30 times 4, and that's 120. And I think we understand that. Okay, and then here you're going to have 3, 30 divided by 3, which is going to give you 10. And x squared divided by x, which is going to give you x. Okay. So we got 10 times x times 7. Well, that's going to be 70 times x. Okay. Is that what you got for your numerator? Okay. okay. Now here, well, the product can be divided into a 30. These are all factors of the numerator and denominator. And we're going to have a 6 here. And six times three gives us 18. And we're going to have an x squared. Okay, here again, six will go into 35 times. And five times seven is 35. So we're going to have 35. And we don't have any x's in the denominator. So we're going to have an x cubed here. Okay, so we can do some factoring. Uh, we have 10 times 12 plus 7x. And down here, uh, 18 and 35 don't have a common factor. But of course, x squared is a common factor to everything. That would be x squared times 18 plus 35x. Okay. Try right, this one. Now, let me just 
I have one caution. I know you don't need the caution, but just for anybody who might be looking at this, there's always a temptation to try to match this up with this and match this up with this. When you look at it, that kind of catches your eye. There's no rule in the world that allows you to match these up because this expression is combined with this expression to give you something completely different. And this is combined with this. Now, if you manage to combine them correctly, then there is sort of a matchup that happens. But what we want to do is just the same thing that we've always been doing. Okay, so figure out what the common denominator is, multiply by the common denominator or the common denominator. Okay, so our common denominator is going to be x plus three times x minus one. We're going to multiply this times x plus three times x minus one over x plus three times x minus one. Well, I'm going to write out the higher step. We're going to have this, okay, so this times the first term. These are the one in the denominator, just to keep track of that, minus. This and then the denominator in very similar form. Okay, kind of a mess, but it's very easy to write it out. We just have to be careful. We write our x plus three times x minus one times each term. So here it is multiplied by the five over x plus three. Here it is multiplied by the seven over x minus one. And similarly in the denominator. And we take another close look to make sure we got all the signs right, make sure all these look the same as all the others because it's easy to write something down wrong and just make a clerical mistake when you're doing something like this. Okay, well, this first expression, I'm going to write it out in more detail, could be written. It's x plus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 1 over 1 times 5 over 1, making it clear that the x plus 3 divides itself. And again, the test is we multiply the three numerators together. Do we get the same thing we get if we multiply these numerators together? Answer to that is yes. Yeah. And the denominators clearly multiply out to x plus three. Okay. So we can write this down as this second term is x plus three over one times x minus one over x minus one times seven over one. And then we can write x plus three over x plus three times x minus one over one times three over one minus I'm blind, I'm looking at this one. I need to look at this. Make sure I did that right. Yeah, I did that right. Okay. And I'm gonna have my x plus three over one 
times x minus one over x minus one times five over one. Just rearranging terms in my numerator and denominator. Oops, I see that the x minus one divides the x minus one and everything. And again, this is not a step you'd always write out, but it's one you always want to think. Then we can proceed. This is just one of x minus one times five over one. Which is five times the quantity x minus one. Here we're just going to have seven times the quantity x plus three. Down here, we're going to end up with three times x minus one minus. Five times x plus three. And again, it looks like we ought to be able to do something with x minus ones and x plus threes, but we can't because x minus one is a factor here, but it's not a factor over here. Well, we then do the multiplication. We're going to get five x minus seven x, which is negative two x. And negative five and negative 21, that's negative 23. And then we have. Now here we get again a two a negative two x. Uh, and then it's going to be minus three and minus fifteen minus eighteen. Can we factor this? There's nothing we can factor out of the numerator. I'm going to factor a negative two out of this. Okay. Then to put this in final form, we really don't want all these negative signs. Okay, we can avoid them by multiplying numerator and denominator by negative one. And then all our signs change, and we get two x plus twenty-three over two times the quantity x plus nine. Now again, in open math, I don't know if it's going to accept this. Hopefully it would. And I can't predict that I found an instance where you end up with one of these. But you would want to, since everything has a negative sign on, since you got way more negative signs than you got positive, Multiply the numerator by negative one, in other words, just change all the signs and multiply the denominator by negative one. Again, that just means change all the signs. Okay. The reason you're allowed to change all the signs is because you can multiply by negative one, numerator and denominator. Okay, so. Okay, now, you know, I find that. Uh, a little disagreement, and the students are right. Okay, I was pretty careless here. Uh, after I got my minus 21 here, I guess my eye caught that negative two, and I didn't look back to see I really would have had a negative five here. Okay, so that'd be a negative five and a negative 21, which give me a negative 26. And of course, that's going to work out just a little bit differently. Because now we can factor two out of the numerator and the denominator. And let's go ahead and factor out a negative two. Okay. And then we check. Because there's so many negative signs running around, it's really easy to make a mistake. Is negative two times x equal to negative two x? Yes. Is negative two times 13 equal to negative 26? Yes. Okay, so we've got that. And then negative two x here, that matches. Negative two times nine is negative 18. So we're sure we did it right. And then this could be written as negative two over negative two. I'm gonna, yeah.
Okay. And write it out this way. Again, that's not a step you'd always write out when you want to say. And there's the final result. Okay. Okay, here's another expression, or no, here, here's an equation, okay? And we're gonna do something very similar with equations to what we do with rational expressions or with complex fractions. Um, first thing we wanna do is we wanna find a common denominator. Before we find a common denominator, we better try to factor this quadratic. Now, sometimes a quadratic will factor, sometimes it won't. But in this case, it does. That's going to be 8 over x plus 1 times x plus 3. And that's going to equal 3 over x minus 2 plus 5 over x plus 1. Now we see that our common denominator What's it have to have? You have to have an x minus two in order to hold the x minus two. It has to have an x plus one. And okay, it's already got an x plus one, so we don't need another one. But it's got to have an x plus three. So I multiply everything by. And I'll just do them in order x minus two. And I probably should have put all this over one. It's not really lined up very well, so I need to fix that. And then we're going to modify, do it again. There are no exact keys And multiply by this one. And that's going to equal. Now we can see that the x minus 2 here can be rearranged to divide the x minus 2 here, leaving us with I'll put the three out in front, three times x plus one plus x plus three. The x plus one, everything could be rearranged. So you have an x plus one over x plus one. So that goes away. It's going to be x minus two times x plus three. Here I'll put the five out in front again. And that's going to equal. You're just going to be left with an x minus two times eight. Then we can simply expand. We get this. And then I'm just going to put three dots down here because they're out of time. I'm going to end up with three x squared and a five x squared, which is an eight x squared. I'm going to have a 12 x and a five x, which is 17 x. But we're also going to want to subtract that eight x because this is going to be a quadratic equation. Okay. But we're going to get, we want to get zero over here so we can use a quadratic formula or factoring or whatever method we want to use to solve the quadratic equation. So we've got 17x, we've got to subtract 8x, that's going to give us 9x. 
we got three and negative six, which is negative three. We add two to both sides. That's going to give us a minus one. Okay. So there's our uh, equation. Okay. Um, Okay, so we're left with this equation. Likely that we'll have to use the quadratic formula. That almost factors it's like eight x minus one, and or if, if that was a plus one, we could factor it as eight x plus one times x plus one. Okay, but it doesn't work. Um, so there we have it. And that's really the technique that you have to use for all these problems with fractional expressions, okay? Uh, with equations.